The topic for today is texture. The way this is going to work is that you're going to create a few boxes. Of course, I'm going to draw a dart. You should draw this light most likely because your texture may overlap the box. And you're going to design the textures for your inventive building. And every surface needs to have its own texture study and you may have to do multiple studies for each texture. And the first part of it basically is to divide up the kind of texture. So if you're doing a brick texture, you have a reference probably. And if you're doing standard bricks, you'll just come down and subdivide roughly evenly. And you'll figure out kind of the proportion of those bricks. This is kind of the first thing that you'll do, right? And we all know that bricks tend to have dark actual bricks and light gaps between them. So this sort of thing isn't really going to work, right? If this is your texture for bricks and this is how you develop it, it's not really going to work for you. So this is kind of like the thing to avoid, right? So don't do that. That's not the way that you're going to that you're going to approach this. What you can do is do your layout lightly. Find where those subdivisions are. My brick texture is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to do kind of these strange partial divisions and it's going to be divided up a little bit differently. So my brick layout is going to have big, medium and small bricks. And each brick is going to be a different kind of size. And so it's not really necessarily going to line up the way bricks normally line up. So I'm, I'm actually doing something totally different than what normally happens. But occasionally what is going to happen is certain bricks are going to line up and that's going to help define how this stuff works. So a lot of, I'm kind of planning on those, these subdivisions as where the areas kind of line up. I'm going to extend the size of this brick so it overlaps. Make a little mini brick. Then do a thin brick right here. Then do a big heavy brick. Then do a thin brick that lines up with that one and with the bottom here. Then I'm going to do kind of a blocky brick that comes down and lines up vertically here. Then I'm going to do another medium brick that goes out here, kind of blocky. Then I'm going to have a teeny smallish brick, then a little medium brick, so on. So my brick texture is kind of de kind of developing nicely through there. And I don't have to necessarily draw every single brick for this texture. I just need to figure out kind of how it's going to work for me and sort of the rules of this particular texture. Now, for these textures, I've sketched them in as basically just these simple blocks. And that's not really going to do for my final texture. One of the things that you want to be able to do with your texture is light it. And of course, we do lighting from 45 degree angles. So um, we'll just assume a sort of raking light kind of coming from down to above. Now, we know that if we were to look at this texture, from the side, just like cut this, cut the brick layers in half, we would see the back of a brick, the front surface would be kind of rough. You'd have the edge of the brick, you would have some mortar, and I'm going in in this curve. Let me draw this a lot, let me draw this significantly bigger. So we have the actual brick, rough textured surface. And then we'd have the mortar of the brick and then another brick. 
another rough textured surface, and so on. So that means it's dimensional. And if we look at it as a dimensional thing, like we turn these into, into kind of brick boxes, right? We have rough surface, rough edge surface of the box. We have another one next to it, rough edge surface, rough edge surface, mortar in between, mortar in between. If we light this, then we're going to have a little bit of a cast shadow here, right? All up against this surface. And then we're going to have little bits of shadow here, here to help us kind of indicate the texture, right? So if you're getting up close to this brick, you're going to want to see some of these like overlapping ridges of textures through here. And each of those might cast shadows and so on, right? Depending on where the light is coming from. So it's sort of like your light is coming down from here and then this part gets light, this part gets dark, right? Because your light angle is kind of coming down from here, hitting it, and cast this area into shadow. So that's what we're going to do with this. So we come in, We can define some of the actual um, shapes of the brick a little bit more. We can also do things like make the texture kind of progress across here. And this is another way to do it. Um, you can go from, you can place some shadows in and go to where there's a little bit of tone over the brick. So if you need to draw the bricks on the dark side, you'll kind of know where that happens. So on our five values, on our five value system, we go from basically white to half tone to tone, and then we can decide what our brick textures look like in particular. So we know that on this side of the brick, it's going to be like that. The brick itself is going to have a little bit of tone on it. Or a little bit of half tone. So that brick is going to create a little bit of shadow. So on. And then I can carry that into all these areas. Over here, the brick might get super dark, right? Because we're in shadow, but it still has a darker shadow tone, right? And if I want to get real brave with it, I can get into some super darks, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to develop your texture pattern kind of like this. So you can uh, know that Whatever situation, whatever lighting situation that you have, you know how to draw the texture. And you're going to do that with every single texture on there. And just remember the texture is dimensional. So if you're doing brick texture, it's like that. If you're doing, um, corrugated metal roofing, it kind of goes like this, right? If you do a texture panel of that, you can say, well, these are the subdivisions of the corrugated metal. They go up and down, right? So you're drawing these basically just like cylinders. And then my light comes in from over here. I've got a series of shadow cores, right? Along here where it divides from light to dark. So I go straight to the core tone. Then I've got my tone down here, right? I know that somewhere around here is gonna it's gonna turn into light, right? Right around the edge where I subdivide. And then I know I've got some cast shadow down here. Deep in these grooves. So I need to get darker.
because there's no light hitting it, right? And then I can create a small halftone edge to kind of turn these forms over, right? So I can go through and get all my textures set out just like that. If you're doing roofing texture and it's um, shingles, right? What you need to do is figure out how the shingles overlay. Are they perfectly overlaid like this? And perfectly subdivided? That's kind of boring. Or do they come, do some of them come down and overlap, right? If they do come down and overlap, how much do they overlap? Where do they overlap? So you're going to want to start kind of from the top and work your way down in terms of how these guys are going to overlap each other. And then you can come, then you can do uh, studies where you kind of see more of the sides, or you can just leave that to figure it out for the actual final piece. It doesn't matter. Right? So this is going to be your sort of sh shingle texture. And then you can think, well, if this has light coming on it, right? Then which shingles are going to be in front, which shingles are going to be in back? If this one's in back, then this one has a bigger shadow down here, right? And so on. So this is this is what you're going to need to do is you're going to create a, one texture for each segment of your building and that'll be kind of the next approach to do it. And you'll notice there's some subtle things that I've done here. With this bit, what I've done is I've included a drop or drop or cast shadow mask that's this size and then right here it changes to a bigger size because what I've got if I turn this dimensionally I have a shingle here. This is my shingle that's on top, right? And under that, I've got a shingle that's going to come out like this. And this shingle is under, right? And then even under that, I've got another shingle that's coming out this way and is under this shingle, right? So when I drop, when I cast the shadow down, the shadow is going to be pretty thin here. It's going to come down here and over. And so when I look at it, this shadow is going to be much bigger on this lower one, right? And I translate that two dimension at two dimensionally, just like that, so that I know how that shadow is going to occur. And I'm deciding basically how dimensionally this is going to look. So these are some of the little subtleties that can make your textures a little bit better. Um, so have fun with this. This should be an interesting assignment because you're using two dimensions to kind of think about three dimensions. And if you need to do these three dimensional sketches to help you with that, that's good as well.